You put out a, a book recently. It's called The Only Woman in the Room. What, what, uh, what inspired this book, Ashley? So it's funny because when I grew up, I didn't have a lot of, you know, women around me. I was riding at the time when I was younger, which is a single sport. I got into field hockey much later. My brother played a team sport. So it was always boys around. And, you know, my dad was in construction. Once again, always boys. I never saw women in construction. And then I went in high school. I went to an all boys school that went co-ed, you know, my sophomore year when I went there, but the the ratio was three to one. So I was constantly surrounded by boys in college. Again, I lived with all boys in a house, 14 other boys and myself. So I never really was bothered, nor did it. I was phased by the fact that I was constantly around a lot of men, but it dawned on me when I attended Dave Van Horn's mid Atlantic summit three years ago, when Liz Faircloth and Andressa Gadelli, the co-founders of the Real Estate Invest Her community, asked all the women in attendance to have lunch together. And out of 450 attendees, there were only 14 of us sitting at a table. And I was just dumbfounded. I never realized that there was such a um, huge gap in women in real estate period, and then let alone in commercial and then I don't know any other woman in commercial construction. So I always put it out on every podcast. If you're in commercial construction, please reach out to me because I just would love to, you know, um, network with you. And I think that that realization then, it, well, I know that realization then dawned on me. And on the way home, I said to my husband, I'm going to write a book called the only woman in the room and highlight all of these different stories in real estate, because I think there's um, a couple uh, underlying factors as to why women are not telling their stories. One is they're less likely to push themselves forward and self-promote. Um, and two is I feel that there is um, a situation of not being asked as much as well um, because they aren't promoting themselves as much. So I think it's kind of a seesaw effect. And what I was hoping to achieve, and I think I did achieve, was highlighting these women's stories because they're phenomenal and there's an incredible wealth of knowledge amongst all these women in this book that have a lot of value that people can um, learn from. So, um, and one last point is I selfishly have two daughters and I want them to have role models that they can look up to because I know when they become a teenager, they're going to look at mom and be like, you're not cool. Like, <laughs> get away from me. And this way they have other women that they can look up to and say, okay, those women are also, you know, doing real estate. So maybe mom's onto something. Yeah. So, I mean, the observation is there's very few women in commercial real estate and maybe a few more in real estate in, in general. Now, I think you said, okay, one of the reasons that women tend to not to promote themselves as much, which is maybe why we don't hear about them as much, but what, what do you think are some other reasons why there's less women in, in this business? I have a theory and my theory is that if you look at um, historically uh, women's position in society, it has been of being a caregiver and um, therefore they were less likely to be pushed forward to work. And then if you look a little bit further in history, you see women pushed to work, but pushed only to work in administrative type positions. And then if you look a little bit further, women were pushed to work in other positions, but not so much in math and science STEM type of fields. And now today we're seeing a huge push in women in STEM fields. When you're in real estate and pun is intended here, the foundation of real estate is mathematics. So if you're not pushed at a very early age to go into mathematics, and I was, and I'm very good at math. So I then had no foundation on which to build the walls and walls are finance. So if you don't have a strong mathematical background, you're not going to gravitate towards finance or accounting. I did. I took finance and accounting. And then the roof of the structure is investing. So if you aren't comfortable with mathematics, finance, accounting, you're less likely, in my opinion, to invest. So just like building a house, how can you invest without solid walls and a solid foundation? And I think in the future, not only are we going to see women more um, comfortable with investing, I actually 
predict within the next five years that more women will be in real estate investing than men. And we'll look back and believe we won't even be able to fathom the fact that men dominated real estate for so long, because I think women will overtake it. And in part, because study after study shows that women outperform men in investing once they do invest. It's just getting women to invest in the first place. So my theory is that there's not a, not as many women in the business because there's very few role models, right? I mean, you said it. You said it yourself. You're never really around, surrounded by role models. You didn't even think it was one. Is, is a, it was a thing? I mean, when I grew up, I was never surrounded by a single entrepreneur. So being an entrepreneur, I didn't even know existed. Everybody around me had jobs, right? So I think it's the same thing with real estate, and I think that's one of the reasons we don't have more minorities or more young people is because there's a lack of role models out there. Now, you said something very interesting. You said, hey, I think in five years, it'll, it'll, it'll flip. It'll be more women in there. That's cool. I, I, I think that would be awesome. But what do you think would need to happen for that to be that way? We are all responsible for raising people up and putting them on platforms. Um, you know, I want to thank you, obviously, for uh, I was just at your conference a couple weekends ago and um, you know, was a speaker on the main stage and not a panel. I can't tell you how many times that women are asked to speak at these conferences and only in the capacity of a panel or a side room, uh, you know, headline speaker on a side room, but not on the main stage. I think we're all responsible, whether it's women or men to provide opportunities to speak based off of merit, not gender. I'm not trying to push one gender above another gender. I'm just trying to highlight everyone's experience. And that's not limited to race either. So I think if we share, you know, in conversation, you know, hey, Michael, I have a, a great, um, you know, contact that I think would be uh, a good keynote speaker for your conference next year. I think it's my responsibility to share that with you so we can all um, help position more minorities to your point, uh, different genders, what, whatever the case may be to have more role models. I think diversity um, with problem solving, and this is going back to my psych undergrad, builds better solutions. It takes longer to arrive at those solutions, but ultimately better solutions are um, created out of diverse people. Um, so I think it's because we all look at um, situations differently. We all come from different backgrounds and those backgrounds factor into our decision making process. So things, for example, like the housing shortage crisis right now, the cost of construction, if we get the right people in the room, I know that these problems are not too big for us all to be able to solve. It's just bringing together the right people and having the opportunity for those people to come and have those discussions. I think you mentioned a word called platform, right? Because I know I know uh, many women who are f successful syndicators, but they're not influencers. They're, it's it's kind of like they're you know. And I've I've had conversations with many of them. I said it's great you're successful, but how are you using that success? How are you influencing others? And and it could be back to you know women tend to be less self promotional as a, just a personality type, and men are like look at me, look at me, right? So the men are going to be more visible, therefore there's going to be more appears more role models. And I think that's I think that's a challenge is to how do we uh, help women become influencers in their own right? So you writing this book, for example, Liz Faircloth having having this podcast, how can we encourage women not just to step up as investors, but become influencers in their own right? I think women do have to take part of that responsibility on themselves. But I also, too, think another opportunity and Steve Sims says this best is the best way to be introduced is to have someone introduce you. And I think if someone knows that they are more comfortable in a self-promotional capacity, let's take, for example, like a Steve Lloyd, like Steve Lloyd is um, very outgoing. He is very comfortable um, speaking. He's a great speaker. Um, you know, that's an opportunity for him to then, you know, maybe parlay his comfort with speaking to bringing someone else on board and maybe, you know, on a panel, if they're not so comfortable having the stage all to themselves, but they have tremendous value and wisdom to add that maybe it's more of an interview style and that person then feels more comfortable. There's, um, you know, uh, uh, investor girl, Brit, who's probably the most followed woman real estate investor. I know at least in North America, she, um, 
she actually is very um, self-conscious in um, speaking on stage. And she talks about it all the time that she's more comfortable on Instagram because she's not in front of a large audience, but she really enjoys the interview style. So you'll see a lot of times when she's speaking, it's more in an interview format than her taking on the main stage. Now, could she carry a main stage? Absolutely. But I think we all have different comfort levels. And I think um, it's not, you know, once again, it's not gender related nor race related. If you are in a situation where you have any interest in what we are talking about or any other show that um, you're listening to, reach out to the people who are um, speaking as they're typically very easily able to uh, connect with through Instagram or email or, you know, any other contact and start building relationships. There's a reason why your net worth is your network. And it's ultimately because of the opportunity and access it provides to um, different situations and opportunity and learning learnings that you can gain from someone. So I would definitely take that step. And then also too, there are a lot of different groups that are um, throughout the entire country, even with COVID going on, you can access them virtually. So there are so many free platforms that are available to learn and get comfort, comfortable, excuse me, with real estate that I didn't have that opportunity 12 years ago. This is a more recent phenomenon through YouTube, Clubhouse, Instagram, TikTok, all these different social media type platforms, Meetup, Um, So exploit that because you have the opportunity to go further faster than I ever did. 